Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, the great King, the awesome Lord, the King of glory, the ancient of days, the Father whose name is supreme. We have come again to seek your face, to dwell, to birth in your presence, to cast our hope, our eyes unto you, Lord. For you are our God. And so have your way this night. We come to you with our inadequacies, with our sins. And so we ask for mercy even at this moment in time. We ask you to wash away the sins of your children. Father, if we do not come to you, it will be a great error. But we have come to you. You who have been seeking us we have come to you. So, Lord, show us your mercy. Wash your children with your most precious blood, such that we shall be whiter than snow in the name of Jesus. And so we thank you because we know that you have answered the prayers of your children. And so, Lord, we pray that you be on the throne, that you be the one to minister this night. We pray that your hands, your strength, your power, your Shekinah shall rest upon the instrument you are going to use this night. Let him speak not of the flesh, but let him speak by your power, Lord. Use him as an instrument to speak, Lord. He has not come to speak his own message, not his own gospel, but your own gospel, Jesus. Your gospel has power. Your gospel has the, the power to convert, to strengthen, to defy, even to correct. Lord, everything we need, they are all in your word. And so even today, even this moment, as we have come, Father, let your word penetrate into our heart and be in us and live in us. For your word is our hope and is our light. And so, Lord, let your word prevail this night. Let your word saturate us. Let your word make us to become like you. You are the word of God. And we are your children. Make us people of the word, not people of the world. Father, that the steps we take, the words we speak, the eyes we, we cast upon things shall be evidences manifestations of our being led by your word. And so, Lord, have your way. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My own people of God, it is my pleasure to welcome each and every one of us to the hearts of Jesus and Mary Ministries. Today, we shall take our reading from Romans chapter number 16. Verse 1 to 16. I repeat, Romans chapter 16, verse 1 to 16. And we shall be reading from the New Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition. I commend to you our sister Fuebe, a deacon of the church at Century, so that you may welcome her in the Lord as is fitting for the saints. And help her in whatever she may require from you. For she has been a benefactor of many and of myself as well. Greet Prisca and Aquila who work with me in Christ Jesus and who risked their necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my beloved Epanetus, who was the first convert in Asia for Christ. Greet Mary, 
who has worked very hard among you. Greet Andronicus and the junior, my relatives, who were in prison with me. They are prominent among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Amphiatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my beloved Statis. Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ. Greet my relative Herodion. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those workers in the Lord, Tryphane and the Tryphosa. Greet the beloved Persis, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord. And greet his mother too. And the mother to me also. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobas, Hermas, and the brothers and sisters who are with me. Greet Philologus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus. My dear people of God, once more, I welcome every one of us to this time with the Lord. The reading today happened to be, as it seems to appear, a greeting that St. Paul had written in his letter to the Romans. Remember, the reading came from Romans chapter 6, verse 1 to 16. He was writing to Romans, and he was taking his time to greet them personally. Personally. This is one of the characters that is expected of God's leaders to keep in touch with the, the flock. Now we see Paul making personal greetings. He could not be there physically to greet them, to express his joy, but he took his time to write a letter that has become to us the, the Romans chapter 16. But let us also pay attention to the mood in which Paul was writing and with which he was expressing his communication. Look at the names, so many names mentioned. Look, pay attention to the greetings, the type of greetings. You see that Paul was appreciating the different roles that these men and women of God, that these children of God played in the ministry of Christ. Paul was thanking them. Take, for example, the sister referred to as sister Fuebe, a deacon in the church. As we see in Romans 16 verse 1, and Paul was writing to the church in 
in Rome and ex- 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 uh, introducing Sister Phobe to be treated and welcomed in the Lord as fitting for saints. In other words, Sister Phoebe is a saint. A saint being, meaning that she was living her life according to the principles, according to the ways of Jesus. Not according to the ways of the world. Those who live their lives according to the ways and patterns of the world are not saints. They are children of the world. Children of darkness. Those who live their lives according to the ways of Jesus, they are the saints. Saints are not only people who died and living in heaven with Jesus in his kingdom. No. There are also living saints. At the time of this writing, St. Paul was writing to the church, introducing Sister Phoebe as a saint, a living saint. So, in the church, we see living saints. That is what it ought to be. And Beyond her, we also see so many other people that St. Paul took time to write about, to thank them in a special way for the rules they played, not only in the general body of Christ, but even to his own life and ministry. But before we get into that, let me also make an underline referencing this sister, Fuebe. Uh, whom Paul described as a saint in his letter and uh, asked to be treated as in a way that is fitting for the saints. And uh, Paul said, look at the testament of Paul concerning Sister Phoebe. In Romans 16 verse 2, and he says that she has been a benefactor to many in the kingdom and uh, of myself as well. Wow. A deacon. We don't know whether she's married or not. Such details are not given. But she gave her life for the service of Jesus. And she became a benefactor to the kingdom of God. And she was a key instrument in the support of St. Paul. St. Paul was going to several places, sleeping in people's houses. People were feeding him. And this woman, St. Paul said, she was also my benefactor. She has supported me immensely in ministry. Hmm. And as if that is not enough, if you now go to Romans 16, verse 3, you now see that Paul is now taking his time to talk about Priscilla and Aquila. And he described them as helpers, my helpers in Christ. Wow. Amen. And this Aquila and uh, and Pris- Priscilla perhaps they they were a husband and wife. Perhaps. Perhaps they were parents of some children. The Bible did not give us details of who they were. But because of the writing of St. Paul and introducing them as my helpers in Christ, tells us again that in the body of Christ, 
Aquila and Priscilla were helpers of Paul in the ministry he was called. They played a very powerful role, supportive role, pulling their resources, pulling their time, all to make sure that the work of God is accomplished. God used their support to do wonders, to support even Paul himself. They were associates with Paul, Priscilla, and Aquila. Amen? You, if they were husband and wife, as it most theologians consider them to be, we see that these are husband and wife that were working together. Using their resources, using their marriage to promote the work of God. To make sure that God's work was moving forward. I would say that the opposite of Aquila and Priscilla would be Ananias and Sapphira. That were husband and wives who conspired in hypocrisy to deceive God and his church in the time of Peter. And we know how their lies, their conspiracy, their plots exposed them and how they were they were slain and were buried. No, that is not what God wants of you and I. He wants to see husband and wife united in sincere devotion. Priscilla and Aquila. Before I go further in this message, let me ask you, what do you think Paul, in his writing, is projecting to to us this night. I know that this is still the beginning of this message. If you had paid attention, and I believe you did, when I was reading this Romans chapter one, chapter sixteen, verse one to sixteen, you will see these different people of God how they had their positions, their activities, their rules in the house of God. Sister Fuebe, Paul says, was a great uh, supporter to his ministry. She was a benefactor Priscilla and Aquila were great helpers, as Paul described them. As we are reading down, you see references made to a certain woman called Mary, who worked very hard. In Romans 16, verse 6, as Paul says, in the house of God. And the reference was made to great Andronicus and a junior. And Paul said, these were my relatives who were in prison with me. And they were prominent among the apostles. And they were believers before me. And many others that Paul took time to write about. Some he called co-workers in his in, in Christ. So he said that they had high approval before Christ. So he said greet their family members. 
some he one particular he called a mother, referring to Rufus, and the, whose mother's name was not given. But Papa said, "Great Rufus, verse thirteen, who was chosen in the Lord, and he greeted his mother, who is also my mother." The role that woman played in the ministry of Paul was that of a mother. A time came, and I suspect it to be so. Paul had no more time to write concerning each of the names. And so he now grew to them together. And he began to just mention names and saying, Greet all these. Each and every one of these names had their position in the ministry of Christ. Amen. They had their roles in the body of Christ. So this message is not to talk about or emphasize on the roles of beings, but it is meant to challenge you and I this night to ask ourselves, what are our rules? What is my rule in the in the house of God? What is my rule? In the body of Christ. Because there is a rule. That God. Had a mind. For bringing you into his church. There is a rule you need to play. If we do not play our roles. The body of Christ. Cannot be. As strong as it ought to be. Amen. So. Having said this, my dear friends, the theme of this message, therefore, is where are you in the church? Where are you in the church? If this question was asked, Sister Fuebe, that Paul mentioned in Romans 16, verse 1, you know what she would say? She would say, oh, I am a benefactor in the body of Christ. I am a benefactor to Paul in his ministry. Prisca and Aquila would say, we are husband and wife and uh, we are great support. We are the helpers of Paul. And I'm using the word that Paul used. That great Priscilla or Prisca and Aquila. For they are my helpers in the work of God. Uh, please, if you hear me say Prisca or uh, Priscilla, they are the same thing. Okay. And so, my dear friends, Paul is now challenging you and I this night to be involved in the work of God. To be involved in the work of God. To be actively involved in the work of God. This way we are going to the synagogue to, to worship God, they were always coming to fellowship, but they had their 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 rules in the ministry of Christ. They had their rules. What is your rule? It is praiseworthy that you take your time and come to the ministry, to the house of Jesus and many ministries. And may God bless you for that. It is praiseworthy and you go to church every Sunday. And you go with your family. But beyond that, what is your rule? Are you just in the church just to keep receiving the word of God? Just to keep receiving the blessings? You come to the ministry, you don't even know how things work that for you to hear the word of God. You just come every day, you keep hearing the word of God. What, are, what can you say is your duty? God has place you 
with an assignment in his work, in his vineyard. What is yours? What is your role? Where Prisla or Prisca and Aquila were saying, we are helpers of Paul. What would you say? What would be your response? God is talking to us this night. <laughs> Jesus. God wants us to be fully involved in sharing his gospel. Have you talked to somebody about Christ? Have you? Have you instructed a youth who is going on the path of error to take the path of light. Have you taken time, even in your local parish, or even in our youth ministry, to be involved in teaching these youths the scriptures? How many people have you taught the way of God? Do you teach your children the way of God? This is a moment of self-evaluation. We are called to make deep thoughts. What is your spiritual mileage? Amen? How many are you nursing? How many lives have you touched? You don't have a ministry. You don't have a church. You don't have a pulpit. Sure. But God, who cannot call everybody to be at the pulpit, has an assignment for you. He has an assignment. What are you doing in raising the children that God gave to you? It's an assignment. If you ask <laughs> even Priscilla and Aquila that question, if they were considered husband and wife, they will show you their children, if God bless them with the children. And they will say, we raise them in the fear of God. We ourselves, we walked, and we are walking in the fear of God. The Lord is talking to us this night. <laughs> Jesus, if we do not stand strong in the work of God, who will do the work of God? The devil? Of course not. The kingdom of darkness? Oh my goodness, no way. Who would then do the work of God if not you and I? We have to. Maybe you have married a wife or a husband who is not even a good Christian, who is not even prayerful, well, it is your assignment in the work of God. It is your assignment in the kingdom of God to keep praying for him or for her or for the children. St. Monica did hers. I was able to bring to the body of Christ, Augustine, who is now a saint. It was the prayers of Monica that made Augustine a saint. And before you go further in wondering whether this can come to you, let me also tell you, your prayers concerning your spouse, concerning your children, can be the reason why you be called a saint. If 
even if the church does not recognize you formally as a saint, as in the case of St. Monica or St. Alphonsus and all that, heaven would recognize you as a saint. It is not everybody at the church we call a saint. But those that the church has projected their their, uh, their, their, their saintly life, these are those that the church wants us to emulate. Those that, by grace, they have been singled out to become exemplary characters for you and I to emulate their 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 character. They will know that there are multitudes of saints in heaven. And many of them are saints in heaven. But you and I don't know their names because of the little roles they played in the house of God. My dear friends in Christ, God is calling all of us. If you're not blessed to have a godly husband, know that God who gave you that husband wants you to pray that man into the land of saintly living. The same thing if you married a wife that's not godly. It is an assignment that God has given to you. And we should not fail. We should not fail to pray. Because God is waiting for that man who will pray. For that woman who will pray. So that we use our prayers to bring glory to God. <laughs> who is God talking to? Always be on your knees. Never go down on your knees in prayer without mentioning the names of those that you want the mercy of God to touch their hearts. Bring them to the throne of mercy by way of prayer. Pray unceasingly. And this could be the assignment that God called you. That this is in this ministry. That when she came to this ministry, and uh, she was asking God, what is my role in the house of Jesus or many ministries? And that time I was always talking about, uh, if you want to join uh, intercession ministry, please contact Sister Josephine. If you want to join singing ministry, contact Brother Jude. And I was encouraging people to get into uh, a group in the ministry, get into a ministry, find a group to join. And this sister was now praying and asking God, where do you want me to join? What do you want me to do this ministry? What is your reason for bringing me into this ministry? And God spoke to her very clearly. And this was on the Pentecost of that year. She said that while they were praying in the church on the Pentecost day, that she was crying to God, I want to know why you brought me into HAM. And she said that the voice was very clear, very distinct. I said, I want your assignment is to be praying for Brother Owakwe. That's your assignment. And I tell you, this sister is not in any of these prayer groups or ministries in this our great ministry. But every day, she is lifting brother in prayer. This is what God called her in this ministry. And many times God even passed a message to her to give to me. Because she is sowing the seed of love through prayer upon the life of brother. There's no money, no treasure that anybody could give to a man of God that is greater than prayer. It is prayer. Prayer. <laughs> Keep offering that prayer. And God will bless you. 
God will bless you. Priscilla and Aquila, in fact, when you read Acts of Apostles, where Paul himself uh, encountered uh, Aquila and uh, uh, Priscilla, and he described them as tent makers, tent, tent, tent makers. That was their trade. <laughs> Even Paul himself was also a tent maker. And so he had common trade with them. But in spite of being tent makers, they were also men and women of God. Not giving excuses that their work is so tedious that they don't have time to fellowship. No way. There was no excuse. So when Paul, during one of his missionary activities, met Priscilla and Aquila, in fact, he preached to them and they embraced Paul. They gave their life to Christ. And they began to, to sow into the life of Paul, supporting him, even telling him, passing, asking him to, pay, to, play, to spend night with them. Do you hear that? <laughs> if you read uh, Acts chapter 18, especially from verse 1, you see what how Paul encountered uh, uh, Priscilla and Aquila in Corinth. Okay? And this was when Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. And Paul, the Bible tells us, became acquainted with a Jew named Aquila. Aquila. Amen? And then his wife, Priscilla. So you see that Aquila and Priscilla were husband and wife. <laughs> and we see how they supported, encouraged Paul. Paul went through so many troubles. If you read that Acts chapter 8, you see so many troubles that Paul went through. But these men and women of God were able to be a strong support to Paul. The Lord is going somewhere this night. <laughs> Jesus. In verse 7, an emphasis was drawn so, Andronisus, and Paul says in Romans 16, verse 7, Salute Andronisus and the Junia. And Paul says, These were my kinsmen. Wow. They were my kinsmen. My fellow prisoners. In other words, they were in prison with Paul. You see that? They knew Christ before Paul. When Paul was persecuting the church, Junia and uh, Andronisus were already believers. And so for this reason, Paul now says that these were noteworthy among the apostles and they were in Christ before me. Hmm. So, in spite of being in prison, they continued to fellowship with the people of God. Paul may have persecuted them directly when he was persecuting Christians. But now, a time came when Paul 
was in the same prison with them. Inside the prison, they were having fellowship. And Dronysius never said, because of the troubles I was going through, because it was the cause of the gospel that I was put in prison, I will not follow Christ again. No, that was not what he said. Neither was it what Juniah said. They continued to follow Jesus. Even in the prison, they were preaching. They were fellowshipping. They were not waiting for time to be confident. As far as they were breathing, the gospel was something of great concern for them. They want everyone to know Jesus. So we should be. So we should be. Amen. <laughs> because um, Andronisus and Junia were considered, as Paul put to us, kinsmen of Paul, perhaps they were of the same family. But because the Bible did not tell us so, let us now limit it to kinsmen, an extended family, members of Paul, converted to Christ, and following the ways of God. My dear people of God, these kinsmen of Paul, for sure, were praying for Paul's conversion. When Paul was murdering or rather persecuting Christians. You and I, do you pray for your kinsmen? Do you pray for those who are around you? Do you put them in prayer? This question is also asked me this night. God is asking all these questions. Because it could have been our prayer that may make the difference in their lives if we keep standing the gap. Thank God now God have heard their prayers. And Paul now repented, converted, became a Christian. And now joined them in the work of God. So it is when we persevere in prayers for those who are our relatives. God will touch them. And God can use our prayers, our devotion, to bring them back to himself. Let us not give up. Keep praying! Because the more we pray, the more the obstacles, the mountains that are limiting people from seeing the light of God will collapse. Amen? <laughs> and so St. Paul also talks about Aristobulus. But when he came to mention Aristobulus in the 10th verse, in Acts chapter 16, verse 10, he said, Salute to them who are of Aristobulus' household. And this is very disturbing. All this time, Paul had been mentioning names and saying, Salute to them. He came to Prisca, he said, salute him. Salute Prisca. Salute uh, Fuebe. He kept mentioning their names. But when he came to Aristobulus, he did not say, salute Aristobulus. No. But he said, salute the family of Aristobulus. That is, salute them which are of Aristobulus' household. Wow. 
Why did he not say, Salute Aristobulus? Is it possible that Aristobulus may have died? That's a possibility. It's also likely that he was alive, but he was not saved, even though his family members were saved, were believers. But this head of family, Aristobulus, eh, may be that man who does not have time to go to church, who is always fighting everybody in the house, fighting the wife. Every time you plan the us here in prayer, every time you're always in prayer, he complains about going to church, he complains about things of God, he complains about prayer. Are you familiar with such a man or such family? His family members are born again. His family members know Christ, but not him. They were saved, but not him. Now, if that is the case, then it now makes sense that why Paul could as well say, greet Aristobulus' household, not Aristobulus. Greet his household. <laughs> and so, even in your own family, maybe you have an Aristobulus in your family. Let the household of Aristobulus keep praying for Aristobulus for his conversion. God is talking to me also. I hope he's talking to you. Many of us have Aristobulus in our family. Aristobulus must be a head of the household. But he is an obstacle to the things of God. He's an obstacle. And while St. Paul was writing to the saints, he did not write to greet him because he was not a saint. He was an obstacle to the kingdom of God. You that is hearing my voice, are you Aristobulus? Are you Aristobulus in the body of Christ? Remember the theme of this message. It is a what's the what's the theme again? Where are you in the church? Are you an Aristobulus in the church? Standing at the door of the church to prevent people from coming to know Christ. Are you Aristobulus? <laughs> that is not your name, but your character may be the same as that of Aristobulus. An unregenerate Roman. <laughs> Many wives, many women, many children have Aristobulus as the head of the family. Perhaps you, a woman listen to my voice whose wife, whose husband is Aristobulus. Perhaps you are a child listening to me in this prayer line, but your father he is an Aristobulus. Pray for him. He is dead in Christ. Pray for him. There is no Holy Spirit in him. Pray for him. Amen. <laughs> And to you, who is Aristobulus, who may be listening to this message? I want to ask you, do you notice that when St. Paul wrote to your family, 
It was your household, but not to you. The Lord used Paul to send a message of grace to your child, to your beloved wife, but not to you. Give your life to him. Give your life to Christ. Aristobulus, are you hearing me? <laughs> Jesus. The spirit of Aristobulus will summon that spirit to the altar of God this night. That men who have become Aristobulus, may the Spirit of the Lord arrest them tonight in the name of Jesus. So that they will begin to have the character of the saints. So that they will, their, their hearts will be open to receive the grace of the light of Jesus. Father, raise every Aristobulus in the family of your children. Arrest him. Arrest them. Touch them, Lord. Ah. Maybe like a Capernaum, Aristobulus may have been may have exalted himself. Exalted himself. Because God has blessed Aristobulus. God has blessed him so much wealth. And uh, he's proud. He worships the God of this world. He worships the God of wealth. He worships mammon. But today we are asking God to arrest him. Let Aristobulus be saved from going down to hell in the name of Jesus. It is a sad thing in a family when one is taken to heaven and another left. Imagine being in heaven and you are looking for Aristobulus. That's why I have to pray for every Aristobulus in the family. In the name of Jesus. The unbelief, the spirit of unbelief in Aristobulus in the name of Jesus, come out! We rebuke such spirits right now. In every heart where there is Aristobulus, let that spirit be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let them go down in the name of Jesus. The unfortunate thing about Aristobulus is that because he is the only one in the family that doesn't know God, that is doesn't value things of prayer. His business is more important to him. Pleasure is more important to him than things of God. And he is only one in the family. The implication is that the child of Aristobulus will be in heaven. The wife will be in heaven. Okay? And even the mother of Aristobulus may be in heaven, but not Aristobulus. That's why we have to pray for them. That the veil that have covered the eyes of Aristobulus be broken. Let the veil drop out so that they will see the light of Christ. That they have been rejecting in the name of Jesus. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> Father, touch your people tonight. Touch your children tonight. Let your power touch your children. Let there be a wave of repentance in the family. Let there be revival in the family. In the name of Jesus. Now, in verse 11 of Romans 16, St. Paul now said, Greet the household of 
Narcissus. Did you hear that when it was read? Let's go back to Acts 16, verse 11. Let's read it the way it is written. Greet my relative, Herodian. Greet those in, in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet them. <laughs> Again, you see, Narcissus was the head of the family, the master of the family. And the converts in his house were his servants or his slaves. See that? If again Narcissus was a saint, Paul would have said, Greet Narcissus and his household. But that's not what he said. He rather said, Greet the household of Narcissus. The same thing as in the case of Aristobulus. Again, I may wish to ask, are you Narcissus? Narcissus and Aristobulus in this episode are people who have families that worship God except them, love God except them, pray every time but not them they can spend it the whole weekend drinking or the whole evening every evening drinking they cannot have time a moment with god narcissus amen if you are familiar with history you find that in the days of nero Emperor Nero, there was one Narcissus that was executed by Nero. And the history shows that Narcissus was a very, uh, a man of so much evil. And he was executed. So evidently, if this is the same Narcissus that the Bible is talking about, then you can give an idea of the kind of life that he lived. But since that is that is not directly mentioned to us in the Bible, what we would have to work with is the way St. Paul greeted the household of Narcissus. How would you feel if God says, Greet the household of your family, but not you. It's a sign of danger. We continue to lift our voices to the Lord. To arrest men and women whose life have become like Narcissus or Aristobulus. In the name of Jesus. Now, our attention is drawn also to the next verse in Romans chapter 16, verse 12. And there St. Paul now said, Salute Trifona and the Trifosa who labor in the Lord. Take note of that. Who do what? Labor in the Lord. So, in the body of Christ, these were laborers, Triphone and the Trifusa, laborers in the house of God. The way the name sounds, we might take them to be two sisters.
Okay? Or if they were brothers, we conclude they were working together, loving God. As so St. Paul mentioned their name together. Amen? <laughs> but I have a concern here. St. Paul said, Great Tryphena and the Tryphosa. They were either two sisters or two brothers. Let's not deliberate on that. They were what of their father? Where is their mother? I'm afraid that Tryphone and Tryphosa may come to represent those families where parents don't have time for prayer. But they have children who by grace are in Christ. Are you the Tryphone or are you the Tryphosa? Pray for your mother, pray for your father. <laughs> How often do we see Tryphone and the Tryphosa in the house of God? They come to God, church, but not their parents. They are humble, but not their parents. Faithful men, faithful women, they are the only ones in the family. It may be a big family, but only these two. If you allow me the luxury of extending the family size that Trifone and the Trifosa came from, let's say that that's the family of five or six. What about the other siblings? It's important to talk about them. Perhaps we don't have siblings. But because of where we are going this message, give me the luxury to give them siblings. And they have siblings. Paul did not mention them. Neither did he mention their father. But mentioned this, these two members of the family. An indication that these are the only lights in the family. Are you familiar with that? A family where only one person is the one that have a relationship with God, but not others. If you are such a one, your name is either Trifone or Trifosa. God says of you this night, keep praying, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep praying. Keep praying. Your prayer will bring the dew of heaven that will touch the others. It's a matter of time. It is difficult for Trifone and uh, Trifosa to to find pleasure of prayer in the family because everyone sees Trifosa and Trifona as <laughs> you see this one every time he's praying who knows the kind of persecution that they are facing in the family who knows who knows whether they have been rejected by the family members <laughs> But I, I have Trifosa this night. I greet Trifena this night. Keep praying. Keep praying. You are on the road to heaven. Keep praying that others in the family will join you. Don't give up. That is your rule in the house of God. Trifone. Trifosa, do you hear me? You have asked me, where is my role in the church? Trifone, your role in the church is to pray for everyone in your family. 
Keep praying. You are the twin star in the family. You are the, la- the star that sheds gentle radiance of holiness on everyone around in the family. Don't give up. There is work for you to do. Trifosa. Great work. In your father's house. And don't give up. <laughs> you may not be called to public preaching. Trifone. You may not be called to pulpit. Trifosa. But see, that house where you are the only star, that is your ground of hope for ministry. That is where God has placed you that your light may lead others to Jesus. May not be public preaching, but preaching in the house. Living your life of holiness in the house. We have testimonies of how God has used the holiness, the piety, the devotion of Trifone and the Trifosa to win everyone in the family. Amen? <laughs> ah, Jesus. So, as St. Paul wrote to uh, Trifone and the Trifosa in Romans 16, verse 12, and said, Salute to them who labor in the law, in the Lord. So I tell you tonight, Trifone and the Trifosa, keep laboring in the Lord. Keep laboring in the house of God. Do not give up. Do not. (laughs) Then in Romans 16 verse 15, we now have a name, Nereus and his sister, as St. Paul wrote it. So now, we now have a brother and a sister. St. Paul was writing to greet them. Hmm. What a blessing to see brothers and sisters of the same family, to see siblings sharing the same faith and radical about Jesus. May the Lord strengthen them in the name of Jesus. The Bible says they grew in beauty side by side. Side by side. They go together in the garden of grace. And I pray that such as Nereus and his sister be strengthened with the grace in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Let them be like the rose and lily. Let them be like the blossoming flower even in a desert that brings beauty to where there is hopelessness. May God strengthen them. May God remember them. May He be well with them. May their intercession reach the throne of heaven. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Then, my dear friends, in Romans 16, verse 13, St. Paul said, Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother, who is also my mother. Wow! Wow! <laughs> so in this case, you see mother and son in the family. They are of the Lord. You see, the Lord is using this Romans 16, verse 1 to 16, to teach us different ways we can be in the house of God and play our role. And also, it contains warnings 
cases of those who are not in Christ in the family. So now Paul is saying, salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, a saint of course, and his mother, who is also my mother. Now, you see, saint, uh, you see, Rufus, whose mother is not mentioned, the mother of Rufus plays a role of a mother to Paul. A role of a mother. Think of what, how mothers treat their children. Such a great love. Definitely, Paul had come to this family, and the, the mother of Rufus who can make sure that Paul will eat, or Paul would have a bed, to, a, a room to to sleep. She would take care of her Paul, making sure that even as Paul would be traveling from her city to another city, that Paul has food to eat, that Paul has money in the pocket that he would spend on the road. That Paul would have material things that Paul needed. You know how women do it when the man of God comes. They want to make sure that the man of God is taken care of. That was the role of this mother of Rufus. And Paul says, she is also my mother. Wow. And let me make an exaggeration at this point. Permit me to do that. You remember Simon the Cyrenian, the one that helped Jesus to carry the cross. It is believed that this good woman, Rufus, I mean, sorry, the mother of uh, Rufus is the wife of Simon the Cyrenian. Remember that the Bible tells us in how Simon the Cyrenian was helped to was asked to help to to carry the the cross of Jesus, and the Bible says that 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 he is the the father. That is that uh, uh, Simon of Cyrene is the father of uh, Alexander and the Rufus. Do you, do you remember that mention in the Bible? That was how Saint, that was how Saint Mark described. Simon the Serenian, as the father of Alexander and Rufus. <laughs> so if we go by that, we now say that this uh, Rufus and Rufus and the mother and the father and the sibling Alexander were godly, a godly family godly family. The family that followed Jesus. And, uh, and now it came to the point where Simon, the father of Rufus, would now have to be the carry the one to carry the to help Jesus to carry his cross. It is all the grace of God in the family. My dear friends, I may not have time to continue to go through the other names and the way St. Paul greeted them in Romans 16. But one thing is very clear. That all we have heard so far, all we have heard so far, are enough for us to ask ourselves, where am I in the church? Where am I? Where are you in the church? If you were, if you were a Rufus, you would help to raise a godly family. You would help Jesus to carry his cross. If, if you if you are the father of Rufus, you will help Jesus to carry his cross. And so the Lord is talking to us this night. And I pray for God's grace to be abound. I pray that the Lord will help us in this message to decide to be playing that role that God wants you to play in the house of God. I pray that you sh we shall not be found wanting, that none of us 
shall be found wanting. I pray that we shall tarry to the coming of the Lord. We pray that Jesus will give us extraordinary grace to keep working on the path of life, on the path that he has created for us in the name of Jesus. May we never fear. May we never slumber on the way. May we never be obstacles to the faith of others. Rather, may we be people of faith. And we pray that everyone in the family shall be a man of faith, a woman of faith, in the name of Jesus. May our families be family of faith. In Jesus' gracious name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus.